two years after the famous Woodstock Festival. If you wanted to hear some great bluegrass music, possibly mixed with some country and folk, maybe even a little rock, you could go down to a rural part of North Carolina where, just outside Reedsville, you'd find Carlton Haney's 7th Annual Labor Day Weekend Bluegrass Music Festival. Carlton Haney was known as the P.T. Barnum of bluegrass music back in 1971. What you're hearing now is uh, out in the fields of the Bluegrass Festival. 1965, we started the first Bluegrass Festival at Cantrell's Horse Barn outside of Roanoke, Virginia. Thousands of people come to the Bluegrass Festival each year to see the great musicians. They also come to hear and play with each other because most of the people that attend the Bluegrass Festival pick or sing or sell. Uh, people come in sleeping bags, tents, campers. A lot of people sleep in a station wagon with a mattress inside of it. They drive from hundreds of miles. In fact, we've had people from foreign countries like Japan, Canada, a lot of Canadians. The short hairs pick with the long hairs. They get along good together because they've got a common interest in the music. And uh, they don't think of one another as one being one part of the country or another or another different way of life. They all together at the Bluegrass Festival and get along together. 10,000 people came to this festival and got along together. Whole families, young and old. They came to hear some of the most famous bluegrass musicians of the time. People like Earl Scruggs, Ralph Stanley, Chubby Wines, Jimmy Martin, Mac Wiseman with Blackwell and Collins, and the Osborne Brothers with Ronnie Reno. And they also came to hear some of the younger musicians, guys who were just starting out in their career. Here's Sam Bush with Tony Rice. Del McCurry was just about to release his first LP. Ricky Skaggs played backup for Ralph Stanley, and so did Keith Whitley. The New Deal string band brought a whole new sound to bluegrass music. They called it New Grass. They play right alongside J.D. Crow and the Lilly Brothers with Tex Logan and Don Stover. There was even an international contingent. The Bluegrass 45 came from Kobe, Japan, and the audience just fell in love with it. Carlton Haney added a very special guest Roy Acuff came from the Grand Ole Opry. The recording stars, the country gentleman from Washington, D.C. On Sunday night, there were the results of the Music Inner News Awards, and the fans voted the country gentleman as the favorite band of the year for 1971. I happened to be there making a film about the festival. 
And how that came about, well, that'll be a story for one of our upcoming newsletters. But we were shooting the sights and sounds of the festival. Here I am out in the audience with my camera. John Dildine recorded the sound. And our director of photography was Bob Kaler. Here he is shooting Carlton Haney. The result was a Washington Film Group production titled Bluegrass Country Soul. And this film opened in movie theaters in Washington, D.C., and then played as far north as Cambridge, Mass., as far south as Atlanta, Georgia. And it did fairly well. We got great reviews, but we were never able to find national distribution. That was until 2006 when Time Life Music brought out a DVD. But now that's sold out and the DVD's out of print. So in order to restore the old 35 millimeter film to the way in which it was originally shown in motion picture theaters, we're undertaking a whole new project. Announcing the golden anniversary legacy edition of Bluegrass Country Soul in a multimedia box set that includes a combo pack of a Blu-ray, high-definition DVD, and a standard DVD, along with lots of special features, and a companion book, a 168-page coffee table book with tons of photographs of many of the musicians who were there, and along with anecdotes from various musicians and filmmakers. Uh, this all comes together in a set that also includes reprints from some of the early Mule Skinner news issues from 1971, and because we couldn't get all the music we wanted into one feature-length film, there's two CDs of additional music from the festival. All of this now on sale in a box set that's uh, sure to be a collector's item. So check it out at our website, bluegrasscountrysoul.com, and see the film that's soon to be given to the Bluegrass Hall of Fame as part of its permanent collection.